The Magic Bicycle, Chapter 24. What Happened to Horace Grinsby and Barry Smedlow? On that same night, Barry Smedlow was sucking on his last piece of Sweet Temptations candy, staring at the Kramer house. His father had given him strict orders to talk to Sheriff Kramer and apologize to John. But Barry had ridden his bicycle, the Goliath Cobra Deluxe, all around town for three hours, making excuses and wasting time. It's too late to see the sheriff now, Barry said, sitting in the shadows of a large tree. I should have destroyed that trash heap bike when I had the chance. I didn't really steal it. It was Grinsby's fault. If I'm going to get in trouble, he's going to be in trouble too. Big trouble. I wish I could see him right now. I'd show him. Show him what? Horace Grinsby hissed, stepping from behind the tree. Ag! Barry choked, swallowing the piece of sweet temptations. I think I'll show you something instead, Grinsby said. His eyes suddenly glowed red. Barry gasped. Then the figure with the red eyes put his hands up to his ears and pulled forward, peeling off the face of Horace Grinsby. As the face came off, Barry screamed and shot out into the street on his bicycle. He was halfway down the block when he looked back. Horace Grinsby's black truck was speeding down the street toward Barry. Two tiny red lights glowed behind the windshield. Barry yelped and pedaled faster, jerking down on the Cobra gear levers. The wheels hummed in high gear, but the bike stopped moving. The tires turned round and round, burning into the pavement. Barry moaned and pedaled faster, but the tires just smoked and melted away. The front tire popped, then the rear. Thick black smoke surrounded Barry. Grinsby's truck squealed to a stop. The front door opened. Barry jumped off the Cobra Deluxe, coughing from all the black smoke. He smelled something terrible and dead. The last thing he remembered before he passed out was two red eyes and a glowing red hook swinging toward his throat. A sound of metal hitting metal. Then everything was enveloped in the darkness of a nightmare. Grinsby's black truck was roaring down the old dump road, the red telephone glowing on and off, but Grisby refused to answer. It wasn't my fault, he said, trying to ignore the telephone. I told you I needed more help. This boy made me fail. He's mine now. The red phone glowed brighter and more rapidly. The figure snarled, then grabbed the phone and threw it out the window. The phone exploded as it hit the road. Red flames shot high into the sky. The black truck was blown sideways into a ditch and stopped. The explosion left a tower of smoke in the air. The smoke began to blow and swirl and twist into a deadly familiar shape. Two red eyes glowed out of the blackness. A mouth opened and a roaring hiss shook the ground. I refuse this punishment, the driver yelled. With tremendous force, he knocked the door off the truck and jumped out. He snarled again and shook the glowing red hook at the gigantic serpent. A flash of lightning leaped from the serpent's mouth. As the lightning hit, the figure that had been Horace Grinsby glowed, then disappeared. All that remained was a tiny pile of ashes, which were promptly sucked into the snake's mouth. Then the snake turned toward the truck and spit fire again. But this time the lightning stayed in the air, a road of fire. The truck lifted up into the air and flew on the road of fire, disappearing into the darkness of the snake's mouth. An explosion rocked Barry Smedlow awake. Where am I? Barry asked. He looked around fearfully. By moonlight, he realized he was at the old dump outside town. On the ground next to him was his Goliath Cobra Deluxe. Both tires were melted. The wheels were bent, and many spokes were broken. Barry remembered Grinsby's face and shivered. He'd been through a terrible nightmare. In that dream, he'd traveled through the air in Grinsby's truck on a road of fire that led him right into the mouth of the giant snake. The snake had swallowed him. 
Barry had felt suffocated because a huge chain had been locked around his throat. Something had happened inside the snake, but Barry couldn't remember quite what it was. He felt cold and empty. His mouth was dry as if he'd been chewing on ashes. But if it was a dream, how did I get way out here? Barry asked. The mounds of trash looked like heaps of ashes in the pale moonlight. Barry shivered again. I'm getting out of here. He picked up his bike and noticed something different. A small black metal box was bolted onto the handlebars right above the gear levers. A circled white X was on the side of the box. Somehow the box reminded him of his nightmare. But Barry was afraid to remember. He quickly began pushing his bike into town. Boy, am I in trouble, he muttered. They'll never believe me. And look at this trash heap bike. And we'll go on with chapter 25 in the next video. Hey, please reach down, click like, and subscribe. Come back for our next one. I love you guys. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now.